A very good morning to you, my dear viewer, from wherever you're receiving us from. Praise the name of the Lord. This is Hope Devotion, the program that comes to you every morning from 6 a.m. Uh, the intention of God um, behind this program is to feel hope, it's to spread hope and to keep Jesus alive. We bring you inspiration music and uh, the Word of God that helps us to set the precedence even as we go into the due day. My name is John Blessing. I'm born again and Christ is Lord over my life. I thank God for the grace that has enabled us to come this far. I fellowship with Gospel Outreach Church Ruiru. We are located in Guacairo off Thika Road the, at the exit near Ruiru, Sh I mean uh, Shell Filling Station. We are under the leadership of um, Reverend uh, Apollos and uh, Pastor Susan Gidenji. I'm very delighted and uh, humbled to even to be bringing you the word of God yet again in the course of this week as we have been learning um, on the gift of God that we defined gratitude. It has been a wonderful series and uh, I believe it's blessing you. And even today we are going to go another level, even as we understand uh, the importance of gratitude. Why is it that, the, that gratitude is so important, a gift in our generation? Why is it that, uh, that uh, gratitude is so important, a gift in our relationships, in our homes, and in our spiritual work? We left at um, where Paul was speaking to the church of the Ephesus, and telling them about the importance and emphasizing on thanksgiving or gratitude. And we said that acceleration in gratitude is the will of God. It is the will of God that we may be able to cruise in levels where we can be able to exercise grace. And we said, number one, the importance of gratitude is that gratitude is an important tool in retaining relationship. Relationships are not retained minus gratitude. The truth about life is that friends, uh, gifts can bring people to you, but the character of ingratitude can drive them away. That is the truth. The Bible says um, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, when I heard about your faith, that is Paul that was saying to the church of the Ephesus, he says, when I heard about your faith, I never cease to pray for you, giving thanks. When we, what makes Paul pray for these people? What is he grateful about? He's not grateful about their growth in numbers. He's appreciating their growth in faith. He's appreciating their growth in one area of their lives, and that area is faith. Now, listen to me, friends. Maybe there may not be so massive a growth in your life. Maybe the kind of growth you are registering may not be, uh, be so massive as compared to what others are doing. But when we are able to appreciate, when we are able to be grateful about that very essence that you are calling my growth, that area, that area that you have concentrated on, like David says, I will praise, I will give thanks to God because he is good, because he is good. He does not say for any other reasons, but because God is good. Now, he retains a lifestyle. He retains a lifestyle of acceleration. Paul says, giving thanks to God always for all things and to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 5 and verses number 20. Nobody can retain what they do not appreciate. Nobody can, attain, can retain. You cannot retain what we do not appreciate. Whether it be in a relationship, in a career, the marketplace, or even the place of service. You cannot retain a business you don't appreciate. When you are doing a business you don't appreciate, even the discipline to, to act on it is not there. There is absence of discipline on matters we don't appreciate. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why Paul is creating emphasis and says, in all things we give thanks. 
That is according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verses number 18. And then he emphasizes it again that give thanks always so that we can have this discipline, the discipline of appreciating. Why? Because we are living in days, friends, where that Jesus spoke about that in the last days men will be ungrateful. We have a generation that we are living in that is so wicked in ingratitude. Praise the name of the Lord. It, gratitude will retain our relationships. And not only that, even seasons of grace, seasons of provision, seasons of grace and provision, they are retained as we are able to appreciate. Number two, the other importance of gratitude is that gratitude unlocks gates and, uh, and wells that we can draw from. Gratitude unlocks gates and wells and opens wells that we can be able to draw from. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 100, I believe, in verses number 4, the Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. In other words, gratitude is a key. It is a password. It's a security pass. You are you are known to have matured when you can be able to appreciate. You are known as a believer that you have a, you have a, you have a, you have you have matured on matters grace and attainment. When I am thankful, a thankful attitude. Mm. God Himself says, "Come to my gates." And when you come, don't come minus gratitude. In other words, what will unlock that gate is your gratitude, not your petition, not the amount of crying you are carrying. It is your ability to recognize and to be thankful. Being thankful to the opportunity that we have even a God we can relate with. Bible says, come to the gates with thanksgiving. Gratitude is a key. There may be so many doors. We rub shoulders with people. Men, friends, men and women are doors. We, lock, we, we, we rub shoulders with doors every day. Maybe the person carrying your answer, the answer to your prayer, is that person that every day you, you, have, been, you, you, know, you have been rubbing shoulders with. And why it might become difficult. To be able to draw from that reserve was not because God did not provide that gate. It is not because God did not provide that well that you can be able to draw from. But because there was an element of bankruptcy of gratitude. Praise the name of the Lord. Bible says, enter his gates. As you go into the gates of November. If, as you go into the gates of, uh, of this new day, as you go into this new gate of your day, I want to bring to your attention on the need to go in with gratitude. Maybe yesterday was not so good. Maybe what you had anticipated to do, you did not do. Nevertheless, it is important as we come into this new day, we come with an understanding that this is not a continuation of my yesterday. This is not my a continuation of my troubles. Praise the name of the Lord. Enter the gates. Let your gratitude, let your gratitude unlock wells and gates in your life. In the book of Philippians chapter number four and verses number six, the Bible says that be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Imagine God's criteria, God's way, God's given a formula of answering prayers. The only way a prayer is known to be full is when that prayer is full of thanksgiving. Bible says that be careful for nothing. I know you have you are have cares that you are carrying. I know you have records of things that have not been done. I know you have uh, have a record of matters that have not been attended. But Philippians is say, uh, uh, Paul writing to the Philippians in the book of Philippians chapter four and verses number six. He says, "Let your supplication, let your prayers and your supplications not be less of thanksgiving." Praise the name of the Lord. Now, including. This also does not just include our prayers to God. It also includes our, our requests to people. Men are gates. Through these relationships, the desires, prayers, promotions that God desires to bring into our lives are released. They are structures that God uses to lift 
our lives. There are structures that God uses, you know, to address our needs. Those structures are unlocked by gratitude. Praise the name of the Lord. These structures, they may be so many around us. Someone may be having the answer you need. Someone may probably even be knowing uh, 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 an issue that you have been struggling in. But because of the lack of gratitude, you are unable to, you know, you are locked out of that reserve. You are locked out of that well. Praise the name of the Lord. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 9 and verses number 1, when David ascended into becoming a king, the Bible says he said, he sat down one time and remembered that my becoming a king was not minus the input of Jonathan. And the Bible says, David said, is there anyone remaining in the house of Saul that I might show gratitude for the sake of Jonathan? To show gratitude for, uh, for the sake of Jonathan. There is something Jonathan did. Oh, my dear friend, there is someone that laid their life for you. There is someone that gave themselves, they put their lives on the line so that you and I could benefit. It is just fair. It is just good manners. It is just okay to go back again and be grateful. Praise the name of the Lord. The same case as Jesus laid his life. He put his life on the line so that our lives may be found. By his death certificate became our life, our certificate of birth. In the same nature, there are people that have gone out there. There is our parents. They did so much. And today you are where you are. And even uh, appreciating them becomes a problem. Not only our physical parents, even our spiritual parents. People, even at work, people that encouraged you. Someone that came and showed you that you could do it when you didn't know you could do it. Praise the name of the Lord. David says, is there anyone remaining? As a result, as a result, a man called Mephibosheth was remembered. Today, I, maybe you are struggling with something that is with someone. As you learn appreciation, as you learn appreciation, it will allow you to be able to appreciate, from, to draw from the reserve that the other person carries. In the book of John, chapter number 1 and verses number 46, there's a story about a man called Nathaniel. Nathaniel is told about Jesus. But the perspective of Nathaniel was that when he had that Jesus came from Nazareth, his perspective of Nazareth could have become a limitation for him to be able to draw from the reserve of the gift, Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, he says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of so and so? Can anything good come out of such and such? When the spirit of ingratitude Draw, I mean, lives in a man. When the spirit of ingratitude lives in such a in a person, you are locked out of opportunities. Praise the name of the Lord. This man called Nathaniel almost missed out an opportunity of visitation. He almost missed out on a very important uh, point in his life: the opportunity to meet with the Messiah. And today, I want to bring to your attention, may the spirit of ingratitude not become the hindrance. May it not become the reason why as you go to this that interview, as you go into that business, as you go into that, maybe that, uh, that, that, that account of Nazareth that Nathaniel had would is probably the same account you're having. That account of that business. Oh, this business has not been working well. This, this has not been working. A lot of what has not been may become the reason we become locked out on possibilities that God has had for our lives. Today, as we run, run into the new day, as you're running into whatever errands that you need to run into, I want to encourage you. I want to remind you that it, there are doors that God has set before you, but you cannot walk into those doors unless you have gratitude in your, in your heart. The same case applies to matters salvation. There is a gift of God that he has given. There is a remedy. There is a remedy. The Bible says in the book of John 17 verses 3, and this is eternal life that they may know you, the one true God, and Christ Jesus, whom you sent. 
The truth of the matter is, unless you have come to know that there is a remedy that God has given for the sake of salvation, you might struggle with sin. You, may str you might struggle out there. But today I want to remind you, as we are in the acceleration, uh, in the season of accelerating in gratitude, in accelerating in the gratitude of what God has done and the gift that he has offered, there is an opportunity that God is according you and me to become children of God. The gift of God that has been given is none other. The Bible says that for there is no other name that is given in heaven and on the earth through which men should be saved other than the name of Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I know I am a sinner. I recognize the gift of God for my salvation, Jesus Christ. Today, I open my life and I ask you to come in and make yourself a home in my life. In, write my name in the book of life in Jesus' name. Amen. If today you have made that prayer by faith, then Jesus is Lord in your life. Walk in this light, in the dimension of this light, that I am not what I was yesterday. A new life has begun in my life. And even as we step into this new day, I want you to know that what will retain your relationship, both with God and with men, is your ability and my ability to be grateful. May we embrace gratitude. May we endeavor not to be ungrateful about life and about things that God has given us, the gifts that God has brought across our lives in Jesus' name. I want to wish you a wonderful day full of fruitfulness as you go to your workplace, as you go to whatever you are doing. May God shower you with grace, and I hope to see you again tomorrow by the grace of God, victorious and full of blessing. Shalom. God bless you.